Lovely, thank you, Matt. Um, yes, as Matt uh, said, thank you for the introduction. I, I'm a biologist by training who works in a local museum. And um, these days it feels like there should be a red data book of professions, and I think we'd be RDB1, actually, the few of us who are left. But in the past, certainly museum biologists have, been, have played quite a role in, in uh, sort of liaising between professional uh, specialists, uh, the amateur field of specialism, and the amateurs who are just interested in biological, biological recording. If you look on your um, programme for today, uh, I've just got 10 minutes to do this provocation before we break, and then we'll come back for a panel a presentation and discussion about a bit more detail of what our table just over there was starting to talk about, about uh, the environmental outcomes. And uh, on the programme, it says for my section here, as a primary aim of BioBlitz, the recording story is therefore the most important to tell. You might not agree with that, um, but uh, that's what it says. And so there's a provocation already. In terms of um, recording, it is uh, that bioblitzes do set out very often, certainly the ones in Bristol, uh, as a main aim to see how many species you can find and identify. And actually that's made a sort of target at the end of the period of time. Gosh, how many species there are actually in this location. Is that information that's collected useful? What is an acceptable, useful environmental record? I'm sure all of you in this, this room today probably recognise, of course, it has to be a date, what did, uh, well, when was it you saw the thing, where exactly did you see it, uh, who identified it, who recorded it, and finally, what was it? So um, uh, I thought perhaps I should mention a record from this year's Bristol BioBlitz, the one that kicked off our programme this, this season. So I was there, I was a recorder, um, so my name would go down on a record. Uh, we carried it out at King's Western down on the northern side of Bristol, the national grid reference there, ST548778, uh, and it was on the 4th of May 2013. And what did I see? I saw a small brown bird. <laughs> now, um, is that an acceptable record? I'm sure you'd say no. We'd expect something to be a bit more specific than that. But what we tend to, I think, sometimes end up with, certainly in bioblitzes locally, is that if that record had been of a woodlouse, that would have been okay. And there's a sort of differentiation going on there as, to, as regards how good the quality of identification has to be. And that, of course, reflects back on, on the sort of information you're collecting and how you want to use it. Is it sufficient to, to get children engaged to know that they've identified a woodlouse and know what woodlice do? Or should, they, uh, or should we want to know for sure that it was a Niscus ocellus or one of the other species of woodlouse that it could have been? With um, bioblitzes, there are lots of positive outcomes, I think. Um, and one of those things is perhaps that we end up with a better knowledge of the fauna and flora of a particular site that we're investigating. And hopefully you do get people who have woodlouse specialisms who come along and identify those down to species level. That's great. We know there'll be woodlice at the site, but it'd be really nice to know exactly which species, perhaps there's a rare species there. We also get experts hopefully turning up who may provide new knowledge for that site. Um, I think the first one, one of the first ones that was done here uh, in Bristol was at Ashton Court on the edge of the city and a national expert on bark lice was there. And so for the first time ever, we had a single, we'd never had a single record before of a soakid, a bark lice um, from that site. A lovely ancient bit of uh, veteran trees and lovely woodland and parkland, but we didn't know anything about that group of animals. Now we do. Um, it can also highlight not just um, things that might be common but under-recorded, but of course some of the rarer species. It might help us therefore identify what we need to do to protect those. It might point out that there is actually high quality habitat there that we'd not recognise where these particular species live. Again, perhaps in say ancient woodland and rotting deciduous woodland. It can identify for us species and habitats that we hadn't realised are perhaps of more local or national importance. Above all, that information, that quality of data, should be useful after the bioblitz to the landowner, to the conservationist, to the ecologist, the planner, the environmental communicator, and dare I say, even sometimes a developer. But there are, as well as positive outcomes of getting more information about site, uh, sometimes a sort of negative side of what we're doing. And this is where, certainly at our table, already there's been comment, I think, about how um, some local record centres sometimes have a problem with bioblitzes. One of those areas they have a problem with 
is how good is the data that we're recording. Uh, even if it's uh, better than just saying, here's a woodlouse, if it says Aniscus ocellus, how sure are we that that uh, record is actually correctly identified? And um, other things that perhaps people don't always consider. Um, with local recording, uh, I know with the Bristol Record Office, uh, local record centre, uh, there's a lot of concern that we ensure that people who send in records of anything uh, are aware of how that data will then be used in future. That they're aware that it might be, or the handling of that data might be sold on as commercial gain. So uh, are we making it clear to recorders how we're using that data in future and how it will be used in future? Those sorts of things are perhaps not always considered. But the biggest issue potentially, I guess, around this uh, recording uh, side of things is really post-event. The event happens, it's great, you see lots of people there, they do lots of recording, the information is there, sitting there. But how is it submitted and to whom? Uh, there's this great confusion, I think, at the moment as to where data should go, uh, who is best equipped to handle it. Of course, there are local record centres who want that data, but there's also the Biological Record Centre nationally, national, uh, the NBN, the Gateway. Uh, there are often in counties individual county recorders who want to check that data and make sure that they feel that it's been identified correctly. There's iRecord now on the scene. Uh, individual national schemes for recording different taxa. So how do you make sense of where you send that data to? Is it just as simple as sending it to the local record centre or do you do something else with it? So that sort of issue echoes a general problem, I think, with uh, recording at the moment uh, across the whole board of things. But uh, perhaps more significantly even than that, we should think about uh, what impact BioBlitz is really having. Has it stimulated interest? Uh, does it really ensure, as, as Don was mentioning, uh, that we have started to create a new generation of taxonomists. That's something that in museums we're extremely concerned about. We all rely for our bioblitzes upon local and national experts coming to the event to actually ensure that that quality of data where we can is made good. Are any of our young people who are coming to the bioblitzes stimulated to actually think that they could go on to become that? Uh, I doubt it, to be honest, but um, where is the next generation? Are that level of expertise going to come from if we don't make more of stimulating that? And then when we have decided where we want to incorporate our data and send it to, uh, how do we know that it is actually being used? We, it's nice to think that it is going to be used for nature conservation in particular, I guess, but is there any evidence of that? In fact, there doesn't seem to be much evaluation of what happens at BioBlitzes, is my experience. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do. Uh, the PR side, the impact <coughs> happens over the weekend or whenever it might be. But then afterwards, it's just as important to consider what's happening to that information, how are we using it? So the provocation for you to think about over your coffee before we come back and do a little bit more discussion are really three things, I think. <coughs> how do we apportion the value of species recording against the general awareness raising and environmental education that BioBlitzes can achieve? Is it really that significant? What is the best way to manage the data from BioBlitzes to ensure it reaches the places that will benefit most from receiving it? And how should BioBlitzes demonstrate the usefulness of the event to nature conservation after all that data has been submitted and managed? And just before I finish, um, I just thought I'd show you a piece of data as well. That's an environmental record. Uh, there's a little slip of paper in here that tells me uh, a date, a place, a recorder, a grid reference. But there is also actually a specimen here. There is a dead beetle in this little tube. And, uh, and perhaps as a museum person, you can forgive me for mentioning that um, Museums still play a role, and collecting, unfortunately for many people, uh, does play a role in making sure that that quality of data is reached. And it's a difficult issue. We've done such a fantastic job to get across the conservation message to young people. But if any of those want to go on to become particular experts in bark lice, that person who identified the bark lice didn't do it in the field. He had to take them away 
pickle them, look at them under a microscope. What happens to that specimen? I have no idea where those bark lice are. I would prefer that they be deposited in the local museum where they're available for anyone to come and look at them and research them, study them, and check the identification in 10, 20, 50 years' time. So um, my mission in life is to try and reinstate the museum role uh, that there should be in some aspect of all this alongside just general data recording. Thank you.